Hi guys, this is Mr. Aguilar here um, doing your review. I changed things around just so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm going to try to run through this so as not to be time consuming for you guys, but just enough to um, help you guys out here. Uh, several different things you want to be able to see here. Uh, pretty much all the stuff that you see on board uh, on the first pages you want to be able to write down. They're good indications of what's going to be on the test. I'll try to cover everything that I need to. Um, and we'll kind of go along with uh, what you guys have in front of you. There's different things that uh, you guys might want to write down, uh, as well as being able to um, identify the different types of properties. Uh, you might also want to be able to put down the uh, some of these examples that will help you out. Um, pretty much everything and anything you want to. Again, it is an online test. There's 54 questions. Um, let's see if I can get this going a little detour over here it's messing up again if you need my help at all just please let me know uh, email me or con uh, comment on these. It'll be very helpful. Um, I hope this is good enough for you guys. It should be enough for you. Um, but then again, also just be able to study. Uh, check your emails. Make sure everything's updated. Uh, one thing that we want to be able to see here is being able to look at uh, the midpoint and distance from several of these properties. Pythagorean theorem helps you understand the distance between two points given a point right here and a point right here We're going to be able to find that out and the midpoint is a middle point between them um, If we're going to classify these two points, I'm going to kind of clear these up a little bit just so you guys can see them um, I first want to give these two definitions that one being uh, This will be negative one zero and the other one being two negative two um, to use the Pythagorean theorem, we gotta be able to draw out a triangle from here and understand that we're creating this to help us plug our values in. This length right here is two, this side right here is three. If we plug them in into my Pythagorean theorem problem, um, two squared plus three squared is equal to C squared. When you simplify this out, we get four plus nine is equal to C squared, or 13 is equal to C squared. Um, taking the square root of both sides, if we approximate it, um, we're going to get 3.21, I want to say. Um, just a decent approximation to these values. Uh, taking the square root to both sides is going to be very helpful for these. Um, and you can have decimals, so this will be the answer for this one. The next one for the midpoint, we've got to be able to use our two points, changing the color on this one. We're given two points, which is uh, negative one, zero, and the other one being two, negative two. If we go ahead and add up the x's, negative one plus two, which is represented by our x's, we're going to get one over two. So we're looking at a half for our first part. And then if we do the other one, which is zero minus two, or zero plus minus two, divided by two, we're going to get negative one. So if we're looking at the midpoint between these, we're going to look at one half, comma, negative one. And if we're looking at that point, this is our midpoint, the middle between the two. Um, we denote it by the letter M. You do not have to do that, but um, it is another way of doing these problems. Um, again, our point will be one half, comma, negative one. So these are just two examples. If I continue on doing these, we have two more examples coming up. Looking up here, finding the midpoint and distance between these. Again, I'll find the distance first. I'm gonna go ahead and create my triangle out of these. Count them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna get seven squared plus six squared is equal to the longest side C squared, or the hypotenuse of this, which is the orange part part. Um, looking at these, we're going to get 49 plus 36 is equal to C squared. 
49 and 36 is 5, 7, 85. Square root of 85 is roughly 9.2. I want to say roughly, approximately. So this would be the value for that. Again, you might get a better accurate. I'm just doing it as a uh, top of my head. If we also do the midpoint between these two, um, we can classify them as well. I'm trying to change this up so you guys can see a different value for this. The midpoint for this one would be negative 5, 5. And the other point would be 1, negative 2. Taking our two points, we're going to go and plug them in. Adding up the x's, dividing that by 2, which are these two. Adding up our y's, dividing that by 2 will give us our midpoint. So we're going to get 4 over 2. This will give me 3 over 2. This will be 2 and 1 and 1 half. Um, should be negative, sorry. So if I go back to up 1 and 1 half, I'm getting a point here which is our middle point. So you do want to be able to see your values for these and solve them out correspondingly. Okay, this would be, this would be a midpoint for our answer. If you want to pause it and take your time to do this next one, you're more than welcome to. I'm going to go ahead and just take care of it. Our side length is one. If I go all the way across here, this will be nine. So one squared plus nine squared is equal to C squared. So we're going to get 1 plus 9, uh, 81. 82 is equal to C squared. Square root of 82 is going to be equal to C, which should give us 9.01 something, roughly. That's our distance. The other midpoint, we need our two points. So going back, I'm going to get negative 5, 1. And this will give me 4, comma 0. Taking our two points, writing them out, negative 5 plus 4 divided by 2, which is our two x points. Our two y points will be 1 plus 0 divided by 2. So simplifying these out, we're going to go ahead and get 1 half, and then the next one will get 1 half, negative 1 half and 1 half. So go back one, up one, our midpoint for our line will be somewhere right here. Which will be our midpoint. Again, however you want to perceive it, but you do got to be able to do them that way. So these are two answers, both distance and midpoint. Doing the next one, you also want to be able to see the values for these for the midpoints. So to find the midpoints, the first two we're going to do is we're going to add up 7 plus 9 divided by 2. That's our first one. The next one we're going to take our y's, 4 plus negative 1 divided by 2. We're going to get 16 divided by 2. And the other one we're going to get 3 divided by 2, which would be 8 comma 1 and 1 half. You can also leave it as 3 over 2, but it's up to you. Continuing on, we're also going to do the other two. Add up the x's, so 8 plus 0 divided by 2. Negative 9 plus 5 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Again, I'm going through this as quickly as I can, just so you guys have time. I'm not going to be wasting your time here. So here we go. Next portions that you guys want to be able to solve out is your transformations and those are transversals. I would pause it and copy these parts down. You want to be able to know that what, what is congruent means, uh, what does it mean to be adjacent. So we have equals, the congruent sign, we have Congruence, we're looking at verticals. Complementary, the angles add up to 90. And then supplementary means that we have 180 degrees. So you want to be able to classify them and solve them out as well. 
Okay. So stop it if you need to copy down, and we're going to continue. These also give you a pictorial on the transversal types. Um, I'm going to introduce just one more, that one being our exterior angle. So if I'm giving you these ones, this would be alternates here, here, and here. I'll count this as one and two, one and two. Um, this is alternate exterior, so on the outside of the transversals on the opposite side of the transversal. Uh, the parallel, so opposite sides of the parallel, alt outside, the, our alternate sides of the whew, transversal. We also know that the measure of one, the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two. And it will look like another Z shape. So it looks something like that on the outsides of the transversals. And then it is also cut by two lines of the transversals. So you can copy that there. So take your time and copy those down. This great indication. I would also highlight them so you know which angles we're talking about. In this case, the vertical angle that they're referring to is what they form when you draw out the angle. So if you copy down the angles and it forms an X, that's what's going to give you on this one. It's going to give you a Z shape if you highlight the angles in which it's given. So these are the two angles that they're talking about. Z shape and F shape tells me that we're going to look like this because we're looking at two of the angles here. Kind of backwards as well. And then we're looking at a C shape both ways. And then we also have a Z shape right here. So just keep that in mind as we do them. These will be helpful for you guys to solve these things out. Take your time. Rotation and reflection, you also want to be able to apply these, understand that we're getting several different things about them. We're getting a turn, which is a rotation. So we have clockwise and counterclockwise. 90, 180, 270. We also have an X and Y axis flip. And these can also deal with hoi and bucks, which is horizontal lines, zero slopes for values of Y. Bucks is vertical lines, which is going up and down for undefined slopes for all values of X. So those are going to be crucial when we do those. We also have different vectors in which represent left and right and then up and down. So make sure you take your time and solve those out. Okay, here we go. If I had to apply some of these, I also wanted you guys to do some of these. These are their answers on the team test or some of them that you're going to be doing. In this case, because I have a 90 degree here, I know that these angles are complementary, meaning that they add up to 90. They're going to equal 90. Um, these form a line and share a ray. That means they're going to equal 180. And then because these two angles form an X, these are vertical, which they are congruent. So if we had to solve these first ones out, the 1 plus 5X, and I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the parentheses. So 1 plus 5X is our first angle plus 8 plus 4X is going to be equal to 90. I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to get 9 plus 9x. 90. Subtraction of 9, I'm going to get 81. Dividing both sides, I'm going to get x is equal to 9. So first one here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and continue. Supp or supplementary angles or linear pairs, this is another way to say them, is we also have um, the 119 plus the other angle 2x plus 15, which is the other angle must equal 180. So we're going to try to solve this out. When we do that, we're going to get uh, 2x is equal to or 2x plus 134, so we're adding like terms, equals to 180. 
subtracting out 134 from both sides, I'm going to go ahead and get, so 180 minus 134 is going to be equal to 46. 46 divided by 2 is going to be 23. So I want to be able to solve that. Last one is our vertical pair. So 6x plus 2 is going to be equal to 56 because these are congruent. Solving these out, we're going to get 6x is equal to 54. 54 divided by 6 is going to be equal to, hope you guys remember, 9. So these are the ways that you want to be able to solve these things out. Um, just the basic angle identities, which is complementary, supplementary, and vertical. Um, knowing that all angles out to 360 will also be helpful, uh, but I think you'll only see these uh, on the general types. Here we go for the next ones. We have the angle relationships to a transversal, so two parallel lines to a transversal. We want to be able to solve these out um, directly. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the first pair. Identify and just classify would be uh, corresponding. Corresponding angles are congruent, so therefore we're going to set them equal. 105 equals to 14x plus 7. 105 minus 7 is going to give me 98. Divided by 14, we're going to get 7. Our other angle relationship, this will be alternate interior, which also means that these are congruent. 13x minus 10 is equal to 11x plus 10. Subtracting out x's, we're going to get 2x. Adding 10, we're going to get 20. x will be equal to 10. So we have our values there. You want to be able to see them and done. Here we go. At any time, you can always stop this and rewind. It's up to you how you guys want to do them. Um, first one here is our vectors, is our translation. We can also write it as a vector as 7, negative 7, comma, 4. This is our vector for this. Um, being able to apply this will be very important as well. So 7 there. So we're going to take our parts, and at each point we're going to move it back 7, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, and then up 4 will give me 1, 2, 3, 4. So this becomes my new image, so that'll be G prime, and then you can also fix up the rest of them by just following the same graph here. So this is going to go diagonal by 2, so diagonal by 2 will be F prime, and then back one will be H prime. We want to be able to classify those points. We have a directional vector that we can also input, which is going back this way if we need to, um, and just sliding it. It's just a typically side. Um, the next one is a reflection. This involves a bucks problem because it is an equation x is equal to a value. So because it is a vertical line at x is equal to 1, we're looking at a line that goes up and down. At negative 1, the line goes up and down here. This is our line of reflection. We're going to be applying our first point there, and then we're going to count the distance away from the points one, two, three, four. So we're going to go in the opposite direction as well. This is four. This will become V prime. W is going back and forth, so W becomes this one, and then U is on the line of reflection, so that does not change. So this becomes our new um, image, pre-image to image. Counterclockwise rotation about the origin tells me I want to be able to move my standard position line. We're going counterclockwise, so I'm going to spin it up this way. So this is the original image to image. So we want to be able to shift it over and move it back. Um, this is going to move it back one. So if you can kind of visualize it, I'm hoping you guys can. We're going to see it do something like this. So we're going to go counterclockwise backwards. Um, G will still be on top, 
Um, so let's slip this phone. E will be on the bottom and F will be on the sides here. So corresponding them will also be important. We have the standard position, which is our line to start out with. But take your time on those and then we can review them later if you wish. Next one is your triangle properties. You do want to be able to apply these all. The two ones that we do not have to use that are also important are going to be our no-nos. So angle, angle, angle. These are bad relationships. You cannot have these, so this is bad. And then we have ASS and SSA, which are the reverse forms that we cannot use. So take those into account as you guys draft those ones out. If it's none, write none. If it's one, write many. These are the triangle sum properties. If we're looking at our angles here, this is um, exterior angle theorem, where angle A plus angle B will equal the exterior angle C. So this one, this one will equal the third one. We have CPCTC, where you can correspond the sides and lengths with each one of these. So just doing an example, A would correspond or be congruent to angle B, and we can also get sides. So AC would also be corresponding to DF. Okay, these are just two of the six needed to prove CPCTC. The one on the bottom is self-explanatory. All angles must add up to 180, so make sure you guys have that one written down. And then if the angles and sides are congruent, this is equilateral. Triangle there. Sides of congruent, angles of congruent, we also know that these angles will always be 60 degrees, and we know that all sides are going to be congruent. So AB is congruent to BC, is congruent to CA. Any two that we set each other, we're going to be equal to. Um, these ones are telling us this is isosceles triangle theorem. Tells me if that two of, the, two of the opposite sides are congruent, that means their angles must also be congruent. So make sure you guys have those written down as well um, and be practicing them. Um, we will be able to look at them further as we kind of go um, through these processes. Um, and I'll show you guys how to solve some of these problems out. We're gonna look at two of the problems that you guys should have around your review or several problems. Um, being able to classify and identify the different types of congruent statements needed to show that two triangles are congruent or in this case, our shortcut methods um, to prove that two triangles are congruent. In this case, we're given several aspects of these. I'm just gonna kind of run through them with you. In this case, because these share a angle here, we know that those are vertical. This would be a SAS triangle because we can go from these parts, but if we're looking at this part right here, it doesn't really help us as it would be a side-side angle. These are not the same, so this is none. Um, the next two that are not connected for number two, they're not connected, but they do share something. In this case, it would be a side, side, side congruence. The next pair that we're getting here does not have enough information. In this case, we're just given an angle and a side, and we're given nothing other. So we cannot determine anything. This would be nothing. Okay. Next one down below, they share a vertical angle, so we can put that in as they do share it. We want to be able to put one thing, which is a side angle, side congruence that both of them have. The next one, uh, they're not touching, so we can't add anything. But in this case, they have an angle, side angle congruence that we can agree with that it will work. Next one, again, again, because they share, because these parts share a vertical angle, we know we can look at that and just say side angle side, which is also very important. Um, the next one down below, now this is slightly different as you guys have seen because these two share a side, we can actually put that side in. So in this case, we have a side, side, side congruence of both parts of the triangle. 
they must be identical in the way that you've constructed them in order for them to be true. This one again will be our congruent side. The top triangle, we have a side angle side congruence, but the bottom one, we have an angle side side. These are not the same, so we cannot conclude anything from them. 11 is doing the same thing. In this case, you're giving us a 90 degrees, so we have this angles to go off of, and this will give me a side angle side congruence. So these are all the ones that you can see for those in different ways. So being able just to add information doesn't necessarily mean that they're congruent. So make sure you guys are verifying those and checking. Okay, here we go. Solving as well, talked about these. In this case, triangle is given with all sides. We've got to solve for X. In this case, we're going to take all of our angles and add them up. So 55 is our first angle, plus 54, which is our next one, plus X plus 54, 74, is equal to 180. All angles in the triangle must add up to 180. If we simplify this out, 55 plus 54 plus 74 is going to be 183, plus x is equal to 180. If we subtract that both sides with 183, x is going to be equal to negative 3. So that's one way of doing it. The next one over here is our remote angle theorem. You guys will have a problem like this or two on your test. So we're going to add up f and g, and it's going to equal to the exterior angle E, um, or H, E, F. Um, 88 plus 7x plus 4 is equal to 20x minus 1. 88 plus 7. 95 plus 4x equals to 20x minus 1. Adding 1 to both sides, we're going to get 96. Subtracting out 4x from both sides, we're going to get 16. If we simplify this out, did I make 96? 20 minus 4, 96 divided by 16 x is going to be equal to 6. Again, one angle, our other angle, equals the exterior angle. So we've got to be able to see those. Here we go. I saw this triangle there, an equilateral triangle there. In this case, the context of the problem stated that the problem was equilateral, so you had to be known that the triangle was equilateral. So in this case, as long as you make two sides congruent, it doesn't matter. These will be the same. So if I set these two equal, um, 3x plus 6 is equal to 9x minus 12. I'm going to add 12 to both sides and get 18, subtract out. 3x from both sides to get 6x. x will be equal to 3. Again, a pause, pause in the time to write this stuff down as you need. Um, one thing that I know here is that these two angles in isosceles triangle, because we're giving one that opposite sides are congruent, so therefore the angles must be congruent. I know that I can find out what those angles are by 180 subtracting from our 48 gives me 132, 132 divided by 2 is 66. So each one of these angles is 66 degrees as they need to be congruent. Because two, uh, angle 2 is, 60, uh, is 66, I can set it equal to our top equation, which is angle 2, which is 6x plus 6 is equal to 66. I think you can already see what's happening here. Um, subtracting out 6 gives me 60, dividing out by 6 gives me 10. Those are our different types of problems that you can see in the um, problem solving portion as well. Here we go. Quadrilateral properties, identify them, solve them out, use your information. As well as the properties, opposite sides are congruent would be the first one opposite angles are congruent in a parallelogram. And then the third one with the 180 minus x and x is on both sides is 
you're getting um, consecutive angles or next angles in a parallelogram are 180, and then diagonals bisect each other, so therefore it splits it into two equal parts. Here are the type of problems you're going to see. So in this case, if it's asking you to solve for specifically x or y, um, we're given that each part of this diagonal right here must be the same. So that means we can set them equal, 2x plus 3 is equal to 5. Uh, 3 is equal to 3x, x is equal to 1. So that's our first part. You can also figure out the second portion by knowing that both of these must also be congruent as well. So I'm going to set those two. 1 minus 36. Subtracting up there, uh, 8 from both sides, I'm going to get negative 4y. y would be equal to 9. Angles for this one, um, we want to be able to solve these out. In this case, I know that the angles up here are supplementary or consecutive interior or consecutive angles. So therefore, 4y plus 2y will be equal to 180. 6y is going to be equal to 180. y is going to be equal to 30. Okay, so there's two ways you can go about it. You can plug those back in. If you plug the angles back in, you're going to get that this angle is completely 60 degrees and that the other angle 30 times this would be 120. Um, that means x must be equal to um, 60 degrees you could have also plugged back in and solved that as well to get the same angle okay last but not least we know that sides are congruent so this is a little bit different one thing that you need to know is these opposite angles are congruent opposite sides are congruent well it's a little spicy one so let's check this one out um, is equal to 4x minus y. There's a little systems of equations that we can set up here. The way that I'm going to look at this is I'm actually going to solve for systems. Right, we have two variables that we can't solve out for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this equation as 4 minus 4x is equal to negative y, and then multiply everything by negative, which would give me a 4x minus 4 is equal to y. I'm going to take that and plug it back in to my y. So 3x plus 17 is going to be equal to 2 times 4x minus 4. I'm going to quickly simplify this so you guys have enough room for you. Um, looking at this, we're going to get, um, subtracting that, we're going to get uh, 5x. Adding 8 to both sides, we're going to get 25. x is going to be equal to 5. So this is more of a complicated one. You will have more simpler problems for this, but we want to know that just opposite sides are congruent, depending on what you're going to get from this. So just know that. Okay. But take your time, copy this stuff down, review it if you need to. This, is, this one's hard. This one's hard, and I'm not going to probably give you one like this. It'll be a lot more easier and straightforward. Classifying, classifying quadrilaterals. I'm going to abbreviate them. The first one tells me that I'm given opposite side lengths that are different, but the angles are the same. So this clarifies it as a rectangle. Just given four sided figure, this is just a quadrilateral as it just represents a quad. This is also a quad. There's no other information given. Number two would be a kite adjacent. One of the adjacent sides would be congruent. Our next one would be a rectangle. Again, kind of obvious for some of these. Number six is a rhombus. And the last one, even though it might look like a cat, we know no other information, so it has to be a it has to be a just a quadrilateral. And then the last one here 
Sides are congruent, angles are congruent, therefore it tells me it is a it's all right. So you will have several problems that might give you angles and sides to solve out for, so you want to be able to identify those as well. Last but not least, we have here is the elimination portion of them. So you got to be able to graph and tell me how those are all related. The last portion that you want to be able to look at is also the substitution or solving out for x and plugging back in into the value and substituting back in. Also, the elimination, line them up, look for matching coefficients, and then add and subtract to eliminate. In this case, we might need to multiply a value by them in order to plug back in. I'm not going to multiply everything out, as you can use decimals to help you solve for these, um, but I'm just going to show you the introduction for these. Um, you will not be able to use desmos on the final, um, so you do want to be able to use elimination to solve these things out. So these elimination, substitution, and or graphing. So um, being able to do those will be very crucial for solving some of your guys' problems. Okay, so if you have time, copy those down, as well as here. Intersecting lines show that it's one solution, the same sign shows that it is infinitely many solutions. And the last one, no uh, solutions, which mean an inconsistent system. Um, we didn't go over inconsistent and consistent, so don't worry about it. Um, so you do want to be able to identify these as well. Okay. If we're looking at the last pair right here, these are the last different types that we're going to see here. Um, the first one being graphing. You should be able to graph and tell me what the system is providing. What happened here? Give me a second. I hope you guys have taken the time to actually copy some of these things down. I hope you guys are studying um, for your finals as well. So here we go. So the first one here we want to be able to graph. I'm hoping you guys remember how to graph your system. The one thing that we want to be able to do here is go up for, which will be my intercept right here. This is step one. And then to do my slope, which would be two. So I'm going to go up two over one and kind of go up two over one and follow this line down. Um, you guys have a better ruler than me. Um, down one, up two, down one, up two, down one, up two, down one. And go through the whole graph and gives you something like that. Doing the same thing with the other one as well. In a system, the location of the intersections of the points tells you where it is. Up seven, down one over one, down one over one. And I think you guys can see that we're getting an intersection here. The solution to this set would be one. In this case, it would be one comma six. So you do want to be able to see that as well. The next pairs that we're going to get here is going to be a substitution. And the reason why I'm looking at a substitution type of problem because I already have an isolated variable. Whenever you're given an isolated variable, it will be very beneficial for you to just substitute it back in. I'm going to take this value and plug it into my y up here, negative 8 x minus 3 times negative 7 x minus 16 is equal to 9. So we do want to be able to identify that. Negative 8x plus 21. 3 times 16 is going to give me 48. So plus 48 is equal to 9. I'm going to do an all in one fellow swoop. So 21 plus negative 8 is going to give me 13x. And then 9 uh, take away 48. So 9 minus 48 is going to give me negative 39 x is going to be equal to negative 3. Um, I'm not going to take the time to plug it back in, but you want to be able to plug it back in your system. When you do plug it back in your system, uh, 21 minus 16 will give you 5. So your y value should be 5 for that. <clears throat> the last one here that I'm seeing it is going to be an elimination portion. Elimination portion tells me that I really don't have an isolated variable, but I do want to solve it out. In this case, what we can do here is I can multiply this bottom one by 4 because I'm getting rid of my x's here. So if I get rid of this bottom one by 12 plus 16y, 26 times 4 is going to be 104. And I can completely eliminate the middle one 
our 12s go away. So our 12s go away. This gives me 21y and 105. 105 divided by 21 is going to be 5. Again, what you want to be able to do is take your value and plug it back in. Um, I'm hopefully going to do this a little bit faster. So um, your x value, when you do plug it back in, so 16 times 5, 16 times 5 is going to be 80. 104 minus or 80 is 24. Dividing everything by 12, we're going to get 2. Okay, plugging it back in. I went ahead and plugged it into the bottom one. So check your answers. Our ordered pair for this one would be two comma five. The other one would be negative three comma uh, five. So just looking at these ones, being able to apply them and substitute them out is going to be crucial for you guys' test. And that's all I have for you guys. Please make sure you guys are studying. Um, if you guys would like the answer key to your guys' review, please send me a picture or of uh, you have what you have completed. Um, as in, what have you done to show me you merited the answer key? Um, hopefully, you guys are studying this whole weekend for this test. Uh, so I hope we really do good. I'll see you guys on Monday. Um, for some of you guys on Monday, everyone else, I'll see you guys on the according days. Um, the schedule of this would be uh, six three, so three six two five one four. So this would be Monday. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday for finals. So, see you guys bright and early. You guys have a good day. Good night, you guys. Bye.